What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna to be doing another thousand round review. This time, we're gonna be doing it on one of my favorite guns of the year, the Dan Wesson DWX. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Dan Wesson DWX, it is one of the coolest guns of the year and one of the most anticipated guns of the year, at least for me and apparently a lot of people who watch my channel because I got a lot of messages about this when it came out a few months ago. I shot this on the first day of the year and I had a great time. Worst things have happened. And since then, we've been putting tons of rounds through it. Not just me, but a lot of the people on our crew as well. Before we get into the review, I do want to mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. We get a lot of the cool stuff on the channel, like guns and gear and ammo, right from the Patreon dollars, so we really appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, that is the best way to do it. Just go to the link in the description and sign up. Also, there's a link in the description to a local homeless shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. Those kids could really use your help. Please go down there and donate to those kids. And then finally, I want to thank the sponsor of the video, Man Manning and Sons. He sponsored the ammunition for the thousand round review and we really appreciate that. We shot a thousand rounds through the gun full of blazer brass and federal 115 grain. So if you're interested in some cool stuff, guns, gear, that kind of thing, go over and check out Manning and Sons. Now the Dan Wesson DWX is designed basically to be a really good shooting pistol. I don't know if it's exactly designed for competition, but it has a, an enormous amount of competition features to it as it's kind of a hybrid between two very awesome companies at Manning making competition guns. On the one end, you have CZ-75 features from a company like CZ, who is very storied and has lots of experience in making excellent pistols. And on the other hand, you have Dan Wesson, who was acquired by CZ, who also makes very awesome 1911s and 2011s. And what you get out of this pistol is sort of a mix between a CZ and a 1911 or 2011, and you get all the best features of both, in my personal opinion. So let's break those down. We'll start at the front here. We have a front green fiber optic, but you can change that for a red if you want or whatever you want to do. We have the Tactical Sport rear sight, which is pretty awesome. It is adjustable for windage and elevation, so you can move that wherever you like. Anti-glare serrations on the top, front slide serrations that are super usable. We have a little bit more slide mass and stuff to grab here uh, than the uh, CZ does, more of a 1911-style uh, slide and a 1911-style dust cover underneath. As you can see here, instead of the shadow style, this actually has Picatinny rail all the way up, and in my personal opinion, I think it looks very mean. At the front of the gun, another 2011 or 1911 style feature. We have an inverted crown bull barrel, which looks absolutely excellent. And on a gun under $2,000 in some cases, that is an incredible feature, which you won't find. Usually you can only get those on like custom 2011s and stuff like that. With the serrations are done extremely well, not too aggressive, but certainly more than enough to grab and easily rack if you want to use that pinch method, which does work very well for quick reloads. We have serrations on the trigger guard, a squared out trigger guard, which is a kind of similar in size to a 1911, which makes sense because we have a 1911 style straight to the rear single action only trigger. The gun itself is a single action only, similar to like the Tactical Sport or 1911, 2011, stuff like that. And the reason for that is because that's how you get the best trigger in the world. And this also has one of those out of maybe like the five best triggers in the world, like the SIG P210 series, the CZ75 series, the 1911s, those three come to mind. The straight back trigger itself is probably the best. There's no fulcrum in it at all. You push it straight to rear, so you have no issues with going back and forth as far as your windage, so you stay on the target a little bit better. It's also very light at three pounds, so it doesn't disturb your sight picture very much when you pull it. And the best part about having this style of trigger is that you get a chance to adjust the trigger bow in at least 1911s you do, but for me personally, it extends the reach of the trigger uh, a little bit further than the CZ75 for me. So this is a little bit more comfortable in my opinion for bigger hands and maybe the CZ series might be a little more comfortable for smaller hands. However, I do like this a lot and it puts my trigger reach right where I want it. We have a CZ75 style magazine release. We've got some uh, CZ grips. We have 25 lines print checkering on the CZ grip. You can see the grip there is designed completely after a CZ. And then the beaver tail and stuff reminds me a lot of a mix of both with an AMB safety. The slide release looks new and overall the gun looks super sexy. It has a cold hammer forged five inch barrel and very high quality parts overall. Now in the actual testing of the gun, as I said in the intro, we did shoot a thousand rounds of ammunition through it and we had zero failures, which is 
what I expected, but I do appreciate it, especially coming from a new model that just came out this year. Man, I get worried because some companies beta test guns on their customers, and this one doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, it was slick, it was fast, and it was reliable. And out of all the ammunition we shot, we had no problems in any of the magazines, which uh, comes with two 19 round magazines with red base plates. However, it also takes CZ P10F magazines as well, and we shot those alongside it and had no malfunctions with those either. I have a bunch of those, so it was actually a lot easier to do the review. 19 round standard capacity is pretty awesome, I gotta say, right out of the box. Now, one of the things you notice when you pick the gun up is it is relatively heavy, a little bit heavier than a 1911, right at the same weight as a Shadow 2 at about 45 ounces, which will help you control that recoil really well. I was surprised about the reliability, partly because it was a mix of guns, and I thought they would have to have a lot of research and development on this, but I think they took their time. Like, a lot of times when guns are released at SHOT Show, they get released prematurely, and things aren't ready, and it turns into kind of a shit show, whereas this, I think, was one of the only guns I've seen lately that was done perfectly. So good job on them for that. Along with reliability, next comes accuracy. And in the accuracy department, whoo, this damn thing is tied with everything and second to none. I'll take that. I mean, we are really impressed with the accuracy. This was same accuracy you're gonna get out of a uh, custom 2011, same accuracy you're gonna get out of a Tactical Sport 2. It was really, really impressive. The only downside of this, along with the Tactical Sport 2, is that you don't get an optics mounting system on the gun. And for $2,000, that does kind of suck. And I'm pretty sure there are going to be optics ready versions of this coming in the future, similar to the way Staccato released theirs years ago. But for right now, you're going to have to have it milled. There are several companies that will do that, and we will be having ours milled after the review process is done, which is right now. So the next time you see this gun, it will probably have an SRO on it. That being said, it doesn't right now. So we're going to have to work with the pretty incredible iron sights that have not only uh, a fiber optic front but they have serrations on them uh, so you don't get glare in the rear sight again adjustable and the sight picture is perfect uh, the the front sight is raised and it's very narrow so it's very easy to acquire even smaller targets at distance making this gun super accurate add that cold hammer forge barrel to it and add that phenomenal trigger and you get a gun that's pretty hard to miss with the speed of the gun was on par with accuracy <laughs> Even though it had a little bit more slide mass, it actually shot just as fast as a CZ. I mean, 2011s are just as fast as CZs as well because the trigger uh, reach and the trigger return is very, very short. So you can see the reset on the trigger. Very short, and not only is it very short, but it's actually forced out a little bit further than a lot of the 2011s that I normally shoot, making that gun super fast. So if you have to shoot uh, quickly up close or hammer those pairs, you can definitely do that with this gun. The ergonomics actually support that as well. Uh, you can ride high on the grip, and unlike a 2011, there is no grip safety, so you can get really high in the gun, and as you can see, uh, the bore axis is really low. And it's nice, because not only is the axis low and the ergonomics feel great, but you've got a lot of length and weight out on that dust cover, keeping that muzzle low as well. And again, the bull barrel adds a little extra weight out there also, all helping that muzzle stay flat while you shoot. So the speed, the accuracy, and the reliability were all pretty amazing. Now, you are gonna have to pay for that again at the $2,000 price point, but I think with the features of the gun, the reliability of the gun, the accuracy of the gun, and the speed of the gun, man, it's hard to beat this. And again, it's in that top five. Like if you want a really good target pistol, there's a few places you can go. You can get a 2011, you can get into a Staccato for about $2,000, $2,500. You can get into this for about $2,000. You can get into the Tactical Sport 2 around there as well. Maybe go for a USP Expert, although I think this is gonna be a lot faster and newer and more modern. And I also think this is gonna compete, if not beat, a lot of the SIG offerings like the 210 or even the 226 or the new X5. Uh, 
I think that if I had to take this or an X5 Legion, I would be taking this all day and twice on Sunday. So far, I'm really impressed with the DWX, and the only downside that I see is the price and the fact that it's not optics ready. That being said, the advantage of it not being optics ready is that if you do get it milled, which I will, the optic will be direct mounted to the slide, you know, so you uh, kind of decrease the amount of weak points that you have there. On top of that, it usually rides lower when it's direct mounted. So at the end of the day, I'm actually gonna get a better product, but I'm gonna have to send it off and get it back and pay a little extra money as well. That being said, for me personally, it's gonna be well worth it. All the features mixed together make an absolutely great pistol. The question is, is it better than a CZ or a 2011? I would say that it's about the same, sadly. <laughs> I, I think the mix of two of the best competition pistols in the world just created another competition pistol that was of equal quality. Uh, so far, I love the gun. There will be updates because we plan on shooting this more. Uh, next year, hopefully limited optics will be open in USPSA and this is certainly gonna get its time. So I'll have some update videos. If you wanna have versus videos, we already plan on doing one of these, I think, with the Tactical Sport 2. You'll have to let us know if you want that. If you want one with like a particular 2011, a Staccato, a Prodigy, something like that, let us know. Anything you want a versus with, put it in the comment section. Anything you wanna see in the future for videos, if you see some cool guns uh, that I haven't had on the channel yet, throw that down there as well. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.